on board offline. I am on vacation, but right before I went on vacation, I filmed the unboxing for a game called King's Abbey. So I wanted to go ahead and get that unboxing out to you, but obviously I don't have a green screen or anything. I think really this is better than a green screen anyway, right? So I apologize for the sound if it's a little bit off in the intro and outro. I don't have my uh, microphone with me, but everything should be normal for the actual unboxing. So anyway, this is King's Abbey. This is a uh, worker placement game. Uh, it's called a, a, an 11th century Abbey building game that's very specific. So let's get right into it. And uh, there's dice rolling involved and all this kind of stuff, but we're just doing the unboxing right now. So let's get right into it and I'll show you what comes inside the box. All right, y'all, here's the King's Abbey, an 11th century Abbey building game by Breaking Games, designed by Randy Rathert, art by Anna Talanova. Ages 14 plus, one to five players, always excited to have a solo option built into the game, and then 90 to 180 minutes. Hopefully that's that's uh, like just a natural kind of outcropping of the game and not just a uh, added on variant. Because a lot of times the variant, if, if, if it's, you know, if it's just a variant, it's not nearly as good as if it's just kind of a natural outcropping of the way the game was designed. So we will get in here and check it out. And I'm gonna be doing a, rules video for this so uh either way you'll get to find out all right so here we go let's see man let's got obviously a lot of dice in the game all these components here uh train your workers defend against the darkness build the king's abbey there is a video tutorial apparently that's cool um yeah okay let's get into the game and see what we've got Okay, let's see. We've got the rule book right here. Rules of the game. All right, uh, always flip to the back first and let me get the page count. We've got 20 pages, but this is an appendix. Another appendix. Okay, so it looks like 17 pages for rules of play. And the uh, uh, text is not super small, so that's good. So uh, let's kind of start back up here. Oh, look, we've got the story up here. All right, so the rules will start on page two, go to page 17. Got the components, setting up the game. I have heard some mixed reviews about the quality of the rules in terms of clarity. So I'm interested to dive into this and really kind of see what we've got going here. Phases of play. I mean, there do seem to be a decent number of diagrams and stuff examples that's that's usually a good sign as far as um clarity goes so i guess we'll just have to wait and see there is a lot of text though so i can see how that could kind of start to blend together but i'll get into this rule book here soon and and we'll see how that goes anything on the back nope all right and what is this do we have a rules reference guide so oh, here's the solo rules, okay. All right. The player follows all the same rules for a two player game with the following exceptions. That's usually a good sign we'll, uh, that there's not a, a ton. Oh, look, and the solo rules are actually just about, just here, just right here is what you need after a few solo games with the above rules. So these right here are the changes for the solo game. And then try these challenging solo missions. That's pretty neat, okay. All right, I'm kind of excited about that. And then here you got the quick play rules. Uh, it's recommended to use these rules for your first game. Okay, that's good to know. That can be helpful. Quick play rules or, or like first game rules are always good for getting into it, uh, for getting into a game, a new game. Building cards, so here we go. I guess the uh, kind of outline for each of the building cards. Uh, Abbott's Den, Bakery, Barracks, all that stuff. Continue in the back. Lots of buildings. And then Viking cards. All right. Got to watch out for those Vikings. All right. Is this... Let's see. This must be a player board, I'm guessing. All right. Oh, yeah. All right. Now, so should be noted that this is a card... This is, a, uh, you know, is not a cardboard. This is just card stock. So something to keep in mind as far as uh, the, the quality goes, if that's something you're worried about. But... Um, 
I do like the colors though. I, I, I wonder, I don't know enough about colorblind issues to know how these colors, you know, would affect that. And I haven't seen the rest of the components, but as far as just the colors popping and everything, I really like uh, what I'm seeing here is pretty neat. And this, of course, I'm guessing is your Abbey that you start building. And maybe these are different. Uh, oh, you know, these are probably different spots for these building cards based on their shape. I'm guessing they would go here. So that's kind of neat. Uh, an altar it says, here's some different names of church people, Cardinal, Bishop, Priest, Deacon, and Postulant. Okay. Interesting. Baptistry. All right, so we've got some more player boards now. Oh, and I didn't even look to see if there's it's double sided. I'm trying to see if there's any differences here. That equals five equals one. Same thing. One, two, three, four, five. Those all look the same. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why why it would be double sided if it's if it's the same thing on each side, but. Now that is a bad thing. I just I'm curious what the differences would be, but I don't. I'm not really seeing any. But you do. We have uh, five of those, so yeah, like separate your player board. All right, let's see what this is. Bonuses for second building of the same kind. Okay, both buildings must have a peasant. And okay, so this must be quick reference for those bonuses. Uh, each player may build only one of the three of these buildings in each game. Chapter House, Califactory, Refectory, Refectory. King's Abbey phases, all right. And there are 12 phases. I was, uh, who was I think, um, maybe Rado. I was watching a video on this, and Rado was talking about how when he first heard there were 12 phases, you know, it kind of made his brain swim a little bit or whatever because, you know, that's a lot to go through. But then he said, oh, really, once you go through it once or twice it all really starts to flow so i'm hoping that's my experience as well uh three peasant feeding levels okay one grain two grain three grain income end of game scoring all right and of course you got five of these player reference cards this is going to be the board oh not as big as i expected okay i guess because a lot of what's going to happen is going to be on the player board player boards but it looks like we have uh, victory points probably around the side here this is the darkness track because part of the, of the whole deal here is you're fighting against the darkness of the 11th century uh, building I don't think you can see it well, let's see oh let me do this there you go building market all right so draw pile so obviously the cards for the building cards are gonna be here Probably based on this, I'm guessing it's going to be one of those situations where the cards down here are cheaper. Obviously, it's I'm guessing this is the cost one, and then the so these are easier to get, and then you got to pay more to get to these, and then you know they'll probably come down the row, I guess, as we go along. Got an event and crusade over here. Uh, one coin equals draw and keep top card. All right, uh, initiative resource pile. Initiative, center market, got something down here. Don't know what that's going to be about yet. But all, all, so we have four of these style areas labeled two, three, four, and five. Oh, these are going to be resources, I'm sure. Look, like got trees, the fields, um, mountains, and whatever. Oh, no, this is probably for maybe the cows up here, and this is the mountain. I don't know. Point is, I'm pretty sure these are resources and looks like you got bonus situations as well for all those. And the victory point track does go all the way to 100. I'm glad it's not one of these. Yeah, I've seen some games where it'll be going, 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 and it stops like 80. And so then if you lap it, then you got to do whatever you're at plus a weird number. It's much easier if it goes to 100 like this. All right. So, uh, and as far as thickness, this is great as far as that goes. It feels like that, that'll hold up. No worries. Okay. Oh, the dice. I didn't realize that these were small dice. I love small dice. This is so cool. So I, you know, like, I don't know. Basically, I like either large chunky dice or little tiny dice. It, it, it's kind of how I am with that. I think that, you know, the normal size dice are, are just, you know, normal and remarkable. And these, though, are really cool. Yeah, uh, These <clears throat> remind me, I think maybe they're a little bit bigger than Dead of Winter dice by, by just a little bit. But... Um, in terms of 
how they feel. They, they you know, they, they feel like they're good quality. The, you can see the, the pips are sunken in. They're not painted on. I mean, they might be painted in there, but they're sunken in, which always helps to uh, prevent wear and tear, which is always good. And uh, so we got red, blue, orange, yellow, and green. Oops, I just lost something. All right, let's see what this is. Now, I, I, no, I just realized everything is pre-punched. That's cool. That's cool. All right. And so obviously it says initiative on the back. That's interesting. That, but it's got that resource on the front. I'm wondering what that's all about. And let's see. We've got this token here. Interesting. Okay. All right. And... Then in here, we've got, looks like we got some more. We've got discard after use. Looks like a cart of some kind and a bag of. I'm not sure what that is. Well, you, and you've got like some weapons there. Looks like. There's the Torah. Okay, interesting. Okay, um, here we've got coins. All right. And all these tokens feel like a pretty good thickness as far as, you know, like the only thing that surprised me in terms of uh, card stock were those player boards or player cards, I should say, because uh, I'm assuming you got to put stuff on top of those. Uh, all the rest of this stuff feels like it's good, you know, good thickness in terms of uh, uh, the, the cardboard used and everything, the card stock that I feel like it'll, it'll hold up pretty well. Uh, but you know, then again, with the, uh, you know what, you know what, you can compare the player board quality or player board thickness to. Uh, I would say it's very similar to, in Dead of Winter. Uh, at least I, I don't know about Long Night because I've only played that once and I can't remember if those locations were cardboard. But these player uh, player cards are similar to the location cards and the player cards in the original Dead of Winter. So for anybody that's played that, I know a lot of people have. And these, okay, so these look like our resource uh, tiles right here. It's like cheese, wood, grain, and stone. All right, and uh, here are the, the building cards that we keep seeing referenced all over the place. Whoa. Whoa, I almost... <laughs> I almost lost him. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So barn. Oh, whoa. Okay. All right. So I hope we don't have to shuffle these. If we do, well, I'm guessing we are going to have to shuffle them. Surely we have to shuffle them. Very, uh, this, um, this thickness, uh, this quality card, I'm not super happy about if shuffling is, re well, I don't know. It does tell you on the back what it is, so maybe we don't have to shuffle them. I don't know. I'm very interested to see how these work. Okay, see, these don't say anything on the back. So these are the ones I'm willing to bet I have to shuffle. And I wish they were a little thicker or something because... Um, I don't know. I don't know. But regardless... We're gonna give it a shot, see how it goes. I'm I'm curious why you know certain things in here have uh, what I would consider a really good quality, like the thickness of the tokens and everything is all great, and and then some of these leave a little something to be desired. But it it'll, it'll be it'll be fine, I'm sure. I'll just be very careful if I'm shuffling these reroll two dice. Garden, library. I like the little graphic, like the little uh, artwork on each of these. Each of them, each building type has its own little piece of artwork. They could have just, you know, it could have just been a cloister and, and giving you the stats and everything. So I like that. There's a brewery. Uh, barracks. I'll check that guy out. Dairy farm. Solarium. I, I, I guess that's where you keep. It's like a cellar, yeah. yeah. So we'll go with Abbott's Den, all right. And the 
cell factory. Huh. All right, let's set these aside. You know, let's put these back in here actually because I don't want them getting knocked over and flying all over the place. Hold on, hold on. I'll figure it out. Here we go. Ah! <laughs> I did not figure it out. I just realized. All right, look on the back here, different colors again. So. So who knows, maybe there isn't shuffling going on here. We'll have to see. So if there's no shuffling, then the thickness of the cards matters a lot less, and I'm less, I'm much less worried about that. All right, I'll figure that out later. Let's go back into this. All right, so we've got some more of these tokens. Okay. Oh, very nice. Always a fan of uh, game designers or game companies, designers, whoever adding empty bags for storage purposes. Here we go, we've got a giant purple meeple and some cubes here. Some black dice, all right, and maybe this is for the darkness tracker. All right, then we've got a bunch of white and brown cubes, look kinda like cows maybe, maybe? And ooh, I like these colors. All right, so these are obviously in the different player colors, so I'm guessing that that is going to uh, these will be assigned to each player as you play. And look at these, these right here. I wonder, are you building, are you gonna build wall? Oh, you know what, here, right. So those, the long pieces are probably for here, but I wonder if it's representative of building walls maybe. Uh, building the walls around your abbey perhaps. And, oh, and you know what, these color cubes maybe over here. And in, uh, in this section, I don't know. We're going to get into the rules and we'll figure it out. But that is everything that comes in the box. Oh, no, it's not. No, it's not. We forgot this big deck of cards. Hold on. Let's take a look at this real quick. All right. Okay, so again, this card thickness is the same as these little cards over here. So uh, a, little, a little less than what I, would, what I would hope for. But we will... Make this work. All right, so we've got Vikings or events, but it looks like Vikings. Disaster. Rock slide. Abbey murder. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. Abbey scandal. Mice found in the grain. That'd be bad. Forest fire. Crusade ambush. Thief breaks into Abbey treasury. Look at all these disasters. Abbey fire. Year of plenty. Nice. Year of plenty. Okay, okay, all right, good, good, good. You're playing, fantastic. Vikings, not good. I assume. Oh, each of those actually has different artwork, that's cool. All right, so there's those. And then we've got uh, some Saints cards, okay. Saint Randolph. Saint Leonet, all right, so different saints here. Patron of theology, patron of protection, patron of provision, all right. Look like maybe those are the actual images of the of the actual saints on there, perhaps. All right, so we've got some remodel cards. Interesting, okay, curious what that's about. Now the rest of these all crusade cards. They are. So I guess maybe these are crusade missions as you go on. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now that is everything that comes in the box. All right, so there you go. That's everything that comes inside of King's Abbey. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you like this channel, don't get used to this scenery in the background here. This is not anything like what you're normally gonna get. So I hope this isn't your first video, but if it is, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe if you like the channel. If you like the, uh, the video, give it a thumbs up. You can find me on Twitter, at Board Offline. And until next time, if you're bored online, Board Offline.